Cooler Master's new MM710 and MM711 gaming mice are designed to be fast, lightweight, and accurate. Both are available in black or white, glossy or mattes, and the MM711 is equipped with RGB lighting, whereas the MM710 takes a more stealthy approach. Thanks to the durable yet flexible ultraweave cable, this mouse weighs in at less than 53 grams overall and features a 16,000 dpi pixart sensor and genuine Omron switches. The MM710 and MM711 are dust and splash resistant too, so click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Excellent. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am continuing my build in the Singularity Computer Spectre 2.0 case. This is a custom water-cooled system that is pretty over the top, featuring an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X and dual 2080 Ti graphics cards from MSI. Now, if you watched any of the uh, first three videos on this build, I've sort of taken it a day at a time, getting as much done as I can and showing you guys my progress for that day. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different because there's some things I need to accomplish today, and then I'm gonna need to come back and follow up uh, either later this week or next week once a few things arrive. To that end, first steps today are going to be drain the temporary loop that I set up in the last video, reinstall the motherboard, which is the MSI X570 Godlike, double check the RAM clearance because with these vertical GPU mounts I actually might potentially have a conflict with the RAM slots on the motherboard and I'm gonna try to get RGB LED RAM in there if I can. And then perhaps most importantly install this power supply. Uh, I have another sponsor who's contributing some parts to this build, Corsair. A big thank you to them. I recently did a micro HTX water cool build feature in the Corsair Hydro X components. They have now provided adapter extenders as well as hardline fittings for this build because they're really high quality. They're actually OEM through bits power. I'm still waiting on a few more adapters to arrive. I'm hoping to get some 90s in as well. But for today, the important thing is that I have this power supply, the AX1600i, which is Corsair's highest end power supply, 80 plus titanium rated, 1600 watts of power available. But of course, a build like this is not gonna be complete without a set of custom sleeved cables. For those I am going through end sourced customs. I talked to Joey and I think what we're gonna do is a short little baby extender straight from the power supply itself and then extensions off of that that are actually sleet. So for that, I need to get some really accurate measurements coming from the power supply up to the graphics cards and the motherboard and measuring both the inside run and the outside run so the cables can be made at the exact right lengths they need to be. So the AX1600i from Corsair is a beefy, beefy power supply. We are measuring it in at just shy of eight inches long. That is just shy of 200 millimeters for those of you who don't use the Imperial system. Imperial or metric though, I think we do have enough space to fit it in here. Fortunately, this uh, whole power supply bay down at the bottom is pretty long. I'm just hoping there's enough clearance over here to wedge in as many cables as we possibly can. It does look like there's enough for it to make a little left turn and get around there. Before any of that though, uh, this loop still has liquid in it, although there's no motherboard or anything, so we get to go ahead and drain that. And test one for that task is gonna be at the drain point here on the Spectre 2.0, where there is a conveni conveniently attached quick release valve. Uh, there's not the other side of the quick release valve, which you need in order to open up the quick, quick release valve. I have this one from AlphaCool, which is a beefier, larger size quick release. Um, this is a bigger size than the ones that I uh, used on Riptide. These things are like seriously heavy and quick release goes just like that. But if I'm looking at this side of this one, it's possible that these are the same gauge and everything. Maybe, maybe not, I have no idea. I'm gonna give it a shot. If not, I'll just remove that and we can drain from that point with a G and a quarter fitting. So this is the other side that would go on there. These quick releases are actually so beefy that they are wider than standard G and a quarter there for the end, so can't connect the hose. Fortunately, they come with a little adapter. Step down. Bada bing. All right, so if this works, it's just gonna pop on and start draining. If it doesn't, I don't know what'll happen. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay. No, no, not, not the same. Not gonna fit. We can use this dustpan here to solve all our problems. And now we just unscrew. What could go wrong? Oh God, oh look, see, perfect. I'll be honest, this is actually working pretty well, as messy as it looks.
Here's a bit of feedback for Singularity and just for you guys who are watching this. On the right here are the screws that the case comes with, which I believe are either aluminum or stainless steel. On the left is just a standard steel screw uh, that I fished out of a Fantex box. You'll note that the right screw here is not magnetized, left screw is magnetized. In a build like this, where the case, you kind of want to leave it vertical. There's not really a good way to lay it down on its side. And then the motherboard has a bunch of plastic framing and housing around all the screw holes. I can't really convey just how, oh, oh no, I lost the screw. I'll just let it go. <laughs> I can't really convey how difficult it was without the aid of a magnetized screw to go in to get a screw into like these little gaps like this. Uh, the screw was just falling all over the place and it sucked. But anyway, I'm, I'm gonna replace them with these screws and have a much better time. <laughs> yeah, like up here. Ta-da. Here, let's use one of the old ones on this uh, back here in the corner. And of course I get it on the first try. Oh my gosh. How did I do that? All right, never mind. Never mind. Everything's fine. That's good. <laughs> Should have done this already, but we're testing clearance for the memory over here. So obviously the air cooler that we currently have on this, installed on the CPU is not gonna fit. So we're gonna pull this off real quick. It's always that other clasp. How far is it? Oh, got it, okay. Yay. Yeah, actually there's a, I mean, not a lot of clearance, but. So I got the power supply installed and mounted on the other side. It fits in there pretty snugly, actually, which is nice. And now we are finally accessing the rear panel. Uh, this is the first time I've done this, even though this is my fourth video on this build, because this is the first time I've gotten as far as routing some cables. But there is your rear panel for all intents and purposes. Got the Singularity Computers logo there at the back. And that is so you can put that on there after your cables are routed and you can still get a nice look at your hopefully nice cleanly routed custom designed cables. And then that also gives you a pass through right here so that you can uh, route the cables from the power supply out and through. And imagine maybe for some other cables that we might need to pass through that might also be where we're routing them. From the front of the case here, there's sort of a little uh, bracket that uh, goes along here and that is where they have tucked in all of these cables and that's where you have uh, connections for uh, the pump for example as well as your front panel connectors for power and reset so at this point the graphics cards are where they should be and i definitely have enough clearance for my g-skill trident z ram which means i should have enough room for the g-skill uh, trident z neo ram which is what i'm hopefully going to get and then beyond that uh, the motherboard's where it should be so i know the positioning of the supplemental cpu power as well as the 24 pin again i've got an 8 pin an 8 pin and a 6 pin per graphics card for PCI Express graphics power. So that's gonna be probably one of the challenges. Fortunately with this power supply, I believe there's enough for eight, if not 10 or more uh, PCI Express supplemental graphics connectors. So I should be able to run each of those individually. I took one of them, plugged it in and passed it through here just to see if I was maybe gonna luck out and the length was gonna be like right exactly what it should be. It's not, unfortunately, it's a little bit longer than I want, but it's at least kind of shows me where it's coming out. And then I can sort of get an idea of if they're gonna loop around and plug in maybe something like that. And then come over here to the top for this upper one, something like that. That said, these cables that ship with the power supply themselves are kind of not as loose as you'd want. They're a little bit difficult to maneuver and manipulate around and train properly. So what I'm actually gonna use is this, which is the sleeving that I used when I did my original full power supply sleeving on Arctic Panther way back in the day. Fortunately, I have a good amount of this left. So here's basically what I'm gonna do. Position this where it needs to come directly out of the power supply. Then I cut a length of it and route it to where it needs to be for the 24 pin, for example, right here. The nice thing is with the cable combs in the back of this, I can actually pass it exactly where I want it to be to get back down to the power supply. I just need to figure out which side of the plug it's actually gonna come from. And then uh, once that's laid out where it should be, I just get a measurement, pull it back out, measure how long that was supposed to be, and then I repeat the process for each of the graphics cards as well as both of the eight pins. That's gonna take a few minutes. Then I'm gonna order the cables and then I'm gonna come back to you guys sometime in the future. Let's do a transition. Ooh. And we are back. I was trying to think of some cool effect that might indicate that time has passed from the last shot to this one and I couldn't really come up with anything. I was 
thinking about it, but anyway, I'm sure we'll figure out something. Maybe we'll add a special effect in post. So first off, plans have changed a little bit, and that is simply because a little bit more time has passed between the first part of this video and the second part. We started at the beginning of November, now it is towards the end. There were a bunch of product launches this past month, just tons of distractions that took me away from doing follow-up on this build. But I have some stuff to share with you guys. I think we're going to get as far as setting up the custom sleeve cables, and I do have part of those that have arrived from Insourced. And then I can show you all these other little bits and pieces that are helping to flesh out the finished build, uh, which will hopefully be very soon. I guess the point I'm trying to make is uh, I'm not planning on filling the loop uh, today, but I do have this that arrived, which is also pretty important. This is a power supply tester because my other power supply tester failed. When you have a power supply tester that fails, then you plug in a bunch of power supplies to it and it makes you think all the power supplies are failed. That's, that's not a very fun situation, but uh, this one's new and it should work. So first item to follow up on is of course the testing of the graphics cards with our Trident Z RGB memory. That was successful. There is clearance there. So I hit up G-Skill and they sent this kit over here, which is a Trident Z Neo kit. Uh, the Neo kits are pretty much the same design as uh, the Trident Z original RGB. They did make a slight adjustment to the actual heat spreaders on here. So it's got a little bit more of a two-tone design, which actually I think works perfectly with this build because you got black on one side and you got sort of a a uh, textured metal on the other. It looks roughly the same on either side. And this is a beastly kit too. It's uh, 32 gigs total, four by eight gigs, and it's cast latency 14, uh, DDR4, 3800 speed. So also uh, guaranteed to work with Ryzen or so G-Skill says. So I should be able to run this at full speed and maybe even I'll dabble with some memory overclocking too and see how fast I can get it to go. Another thing that happened since we started shooting this video is the Ryzen 9 3950X launched. Hooray, 3950X. I've alluded to this several times because up till now we've been working with the 3900X, which is a 12 core. Now we've got the 3950X 16 core, which is, uh, this is theoretically the best possible CPU for uh, this platform, uh, unless AMD does amazing things with Ryzen 4000 series next year, but we don't really know any details about that yet. But I got the processor. I'm gonna need to get another one of these because I need one for testing. And once it's installed in here, it's gonna be somewhat permanent, but for now I've got it. So I can go ahead and get the system set up. For cooling on that 3950X, I'm gonna be using the EK Supremacy Evo AMD edition, uh, which is a nice little block from EK. I've actually had this one since roughly the time when AM4 first became a thing and be became popular. So they have newer versions of these blocks that are available now, but I kind of like the simple design of the OG version. And as you can see, it's never really been used. So it's good to go. I already showed you guys that Corsair sent over a bunch of their adapters and fittings from their Hydro X series for me to use with this build. And the only things I was missing was some 90 degree adapters. Those have arrived too, so just wanted to point that out. I got 45s, got 90s. I got all the fittings for the hardline tubing itself as well. And uh, yeah, these are, just, these are just such nice adapters. And you can tell because it's hard to twist the twisty part. We have some more clutch arrivals. Uh, this is directly from Singularity because I talked to them about my fairly unique setup with the graphics cards. Most GPU setups like this don't have an eight and an eight and a six for both graphics cards requiring four eight pins and two six pin PCI Express graphics connectors. Therefore, the way that the cable routing channels are set up is made for just fewer cables because most graphics cards don't have this crazy amount of cables. There are inserts back there that do little cable separations so you can feed things through and make everything look pretty. And Singularity sent me some specially modified versions of those little insert cable combs so that they should fit and work with my setup here. Here they are. I get to fish out the ones that are already in there and replace them with these. And finally, something that arrived, oh gosh, like a week and a half ago, and I was supposed to do a follow-up on this uh, to test this cable, because this is the box from Insourced Customs, and I've got the first look at my 24-pin cables here, which I'm, I think look awesome. Uh, I really like how these turned out. I'm really happy with the selection of colors and the bit of texture you have on the paracord there in the middle, uh, the, sort of the blend and transition from black to gray to white and everything. So really cool. But uh, you know, these need to be tested and Joey, I don't think has this power supply to test them with. He's building these cables based on, I think, engineering schematics that he has available to him. And of course, as I already mentioned, uh, my power supply tester, which I would use to test a cable like this, recently failed in another, as I was testing uh, the 10980XE and everything. So, had to wait for this to arrive, 
distracted with other things. The other thing that Joey did, and I kind of mentioned this earlier in the video, is he made these shorty extensions because power supplies are kind of weird. A lot of them in the 24 pin cable will have two cables that feed into the same plug or they'll have crossovers or sometimes they have a resistor that's soldered midway through the line. And you don't want to deal with any of that if all you're really concerned about is the aesthetic pleasing finished look of the cables. So he took that mess of stuff that needs to happen and integrated it into these little shorty connectors. So that's all taken care of. And what I really have in this is just a straight extension that's as a 24 pin. So what I'm gonna do now is test this 24 pin just to make sure it works with the power supply and everything's good to go there. And I also gotta test these little shorty connectors because he also asked me to do that. And we gotta make sure that these are functional before he goes ahead and sends me the rest of the cables. Here's our initial test of the Shorty 24 pin and we're looking good. Basically, it's just looking to make sure that the right amount of voltage is coming down each rail. So 11.9 uh, on the 12 volts, 3.2 on the 3.3 volts, 4.9 on the 5 volt is all pretty good. Moment of truth. Yay. Here's our test with the extensions in place as well and we're getting the same readings. That means we can now test this actual cable and make sure it fits in the case with the cable lengths and everything and hope that I got my measurements right. So Singularity actually sent me quite a few of these replacement combs and I think that's because it does take a little bit of pressure and twisting and pulling to pull the existing ones out and then you gotta wedge the new ones in. So they were just making sure that if any of these broke, I would have replacements available. Fortunately, didn't break any except one of the ones I was removing, which I didn't need anymore. So I still have backs up, backups of these if that becomes necessary. Popping the sleeved cables in took a little bit of pressure and stuff as well. I was initially using the blunt end of a little hex bit on an iFixit tool. Uh, Joe suggested that I might uh, slip with that and damage the acrylic, which he was very right about, but of course I was just setting him up to be able to give me good advice. Anyway, we switched over to using um, a, a chopstick and a plastic knife, and that actually worked really well. In particular, the butt end of the knife was good because I could push on them, but also leave it wide enough that when it popped in, it was stopping on the other ends of the comb sticking out next to it, so that worked okay. Now with the cable installed, uh, it's beautiful. I mean, if you look at it from this side, it's like perfect ideal. Like, I don't think you can really train cables any better than that. And that's of course, largely due to the fact that we have 3D printed cable combs going down the entire length. I think Joey put like six or seven of them down the entire length of this thing. Once it passes through to the back in that cable management area, those cable combs, I think are actually kind of pinching it a little closer together in the back as opposed to the cable combs from the case which are a little bit wider. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is snip those off so you don't get that sort of wider look and then it pinches down and then it goes wide again and that'll make, that'll make things a lot smoother back there. So for any of you guys who are looking at this footage and be like, ah, it's not perfect the way I want it to, I'm gonna snip those off. I'm just not positive if I'm gonna have to pull that cable out. So if I do, leaving those cable combs in place will really help putting it back in. So that's why they're still there. Now, as far as the overall length of the cable, I think we're okay. We're a little bit longer than I think uh, we need to be just by a couple inches though. And it's better to be a little bit too long than a little bit too short. That's what she said. That said, there is a decent amount of space here in this little uh, cable management area down there. So I tucked it away. I think it's fairly out of sight. So I think that'll be okay for us for now. At this point, I can get back in touch with Joey, let him know that I've tested these cables and they're functional and especially the little shorty extensions. He's gonna get those made for me and sent over. Then I can install the CPU, the block, plug in all the power, run the actual hardline uh, tubes for where those are gonna need to go, figure out how to integrate that front distribution plate because that's, I think, gonna be one of the more challenging things, but fortunately I've got those 90 degree adapters for these front radiators up there so I can work around that. All in all, a lot of progress, I think, in this video, but of course there's still a lot of work still to be done and I have one final announcement, a decision that I've made because I think this build is over the top enough, extreme enough, epic enough to bear the moniker Arctic Panther. It's good to hear that sound again. So this is gonna be Arctic Panther, I'm gonna say three, because uh, the original Arctic Panther had maybe two or three different revisions on it. It will be going in the background once it's all finished and I'll be gaming on it in the future. So no, for all of you guys who have been asking in the comments for me to do a giveaway with this or something, no, I'm not, I'm keeping it for myself. 
But as with the previous videos in this series, I am very interested to hear your feedback. If you like how it's looking so far, if there's any little things that stick out to you where you're like, oh, you should do this a little bit differently. I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys already and I've used some of your ideas to work around some of the issues that I've encountered. So soon as the rest of those cables come in, I will be working on the next phase of this build, hopefully getting everything put together and the loop filled up and I hope it all works awesome and everything. So if you guys aren't subscribed to my channel, do that. Uh, and also check out my store if you wanna buy some merch like these awesome hoodies that we just recently got. I took mine off because I started to get a little bit hot, but they do a good job. See, they keep you kind of warm, even though it's kind of a lightweight hoodie. Anyway, links to that is in the video description, paulshardware.net. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and we'll see you in the next one.